morning. It's Wednesday, August 5th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Be Strong in the Lord, Part 7, Prayer in the Spirit. This week we've been revisiting a series of devotions from 2016 entitled, Faithful Warriors. It's not something we do often, repeating, but this series bears repeating during times of crisis. And so, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18 through 20. Paul writes, Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And pray for me, too. Ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan that the good news is for Jews and Gentiles alike. I'm in chains now, still preaching this message as God's ambassador. So pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him, as I should. Over the past week, we've been looking at what it means to get dressed for warfare, spiritual warfare, that which every Christian faces every day. So far, we've sized up the enemy and begun to dress for the battle. We've put on the belt of truth, the body armor of God's righteousness, the sandals of the gospel preparation of peace, the shield of faith, and the helmet of salvation. We're going to finish this series tomorrow, but today we add one more vital tool for the soldier, and that is communication with the Supreme Commander, prayer in the Spirit. Prayer is a matter of unending communion with our Lord. In his book, Purpose in Prayer, E.M. Bounds quotes these words from former college professor and Confederate soldier General Thomas Stonewall Jackson. Quote, I have so fixed the habit of prayer in my mind that I never raise a glass of water to my lips without asking God's blessing, never seal a letter without putting a word of prayer under the seal, never take a letter from the post without a brief sending of my thoughts heavenward, never change my classes in the lecture room without a minute's petition for the cadets who go out and for those who come in. End of quote. If you're like me, troubling thoughts cloud my mind every time the subject of prayer arises. It's as if the enemy knows if he can't keep my heart from wanting to pray, he'll put enough obstacles in the way to make prayer a burden rather than a blessing. Have you ever had those thoughts? (laughs) How in the world can I develop a prayer life? I've got a zillion things to do. The kids won't be quiet. The dog barks. The pot boils over. My boss hates me. My business and finance are in shambles. And April 15th is almost here. Preacher, it's not that the wolf is at the door. That wolf has moved in and had pups under my kitchen table. And you want me to pray. My experience has been that we don't pray because we've not grasped the importance of prayer. Chuck Swindoll tells in one of his books about a group of amateur climbers scaling part of the Matterhorn near Zermatt, Switzerland. As they came to a narrow, hazardous passage about to make a turn, a gust of wind swept down on them. The experienced guide, knowing the danger this posed for the group, quickly shouted, Get down on your knees! You're only safe on your knees! Let's pray together. Father, like the guys who followed Jesus, teach us to pray. For you today. My dear Christian friend, time never surrenders itself on a platter. You'll never have enough time to do all you have to do until you take the time with Jesus in prayer. Eat you on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.